Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we will pro uh, we will go through our first topic, which is the introduction to economics, topic one. So this topic is a very short topic. We I only have nineteen pages, nineteen slide for this, and it's very easy to understand, uh, easy to comprehend because it relates to daily life. Okay, first of all, kita nak tahu the definition of economics. Uh, from conventional perspective, economics is a social science which studies about how scarce productive resources are allocated efficiently to fulfill the unlimited wants of a human. Sebagai manusia, kita sentiasa ada kehendak yang sangat banyak. Kadang-kadang tu, dia menjangkaui kemampuan untuk fulfill the wants. So, that's why wujudnya bidang ekonomi ni untuk cari cara macam mana nak fulfill penuhkan kehendak manusia yang tidak terbatas tersebut ok setiap kehendak manusia ni wants ni adalah dari sudut goods and services barangan dan kebel, uh, perkhidmatan ok so barangan dan per, uh, perkhidmatan ni dihasilkan menggunakan productive resources sumber so sumber apa yang digunakan untuk menghasilkan goods and services ada empat iaitu the first one is land the second one is labor the third one is capital and the last one is entrepreneur so the definition of land kalau kita translate is tanah tapi from economic perspective land means all natural resources bestowed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to human being so everything yang ada dalam dunia yang kita tidak hasilkan tapi Allah our creator yang hasilkan untuk kita for example air udara air uh, tumbuh-tumbuhan binatang everything uh, biji timah petroleum everything okay it's under the category of land here is land and next one is labor Labor adalah resource juga Manusialah kita And syarat untuk menjadi labor You must be mentally and cap uh, uh, Mentally and physically capable to produce goods To uh, to, to to do job Okay, to, uh, itu adalah labor So, orang yang mampu secara mentally and physically Untuk bekerja uh, So, ada some sort of people Dia tidak Uh, able physically For example Dia cacat ke Sakit ke Ataupun gila ke Ataupun kanak-kanak Masih tidak mampu Physically to do job So kita tak akan Categorisekan dia orang tu Sebagai labor Labor yang Dia kena dua syarat Physically uh, Able And mentally able To do job Okay This is labor The third one is capital Capital Kalau dalam ekonomi so, Sorry Dalam accounting Capital means uh, Modal tapi dalam uh, ekonomi capital means uh, goods can, uh, to produce goods. So, dia lebih kepada machinery. If you want to produce something, ini adalah production aids dia. Nanti saya bagi, bagi example. Okay, so dia bukan semata-mata money, duit, modal tak. And last one is entrepreneur. So, what is entrepreneur? Usahawan. Apa beza entrepreneur dengan labor? Entrepreneur is the boss. This is the employer. This is the employee. Ni yang bekerja, ni yang, ni yang mengupah pekerja. So, entrepreneur ni kelebihan dia, dia ada uh, skills to combine all the four productive resources and make sure we can produce goods and services. So, not everybody can become an entrepreneur. So, kalau semua orang ada bakat jadi entrepreneur, semua orang akan jadi kaya raya. Tak ada. Not everybody is an entrepreneur. And entrepreneur ni, there are the skills yang very rare lah. If we don't have entrepreneur, we only have land, labor and also capital, goods and services cannot be produced. Kita wajib ada keempat-empat ni, barulah boleh hasilkan goods and services untuk penuhi the wants of the human. Okay, for example, macam mana penggunaan the four 
uh, factors of production to produce goods and services. Contoh dia, goods and services in terms of we want to produce pisang goreng. Okay, so to produce pisang goreng, goreng pisang, first of all we need to have land. Land means that the um, raw material to produce goreng pisang. Kita kena ada pisang, kita kena ada uh, apa lagi bahan-bahan untuk hasilkan pisang lah, pisang goreng. Uh, tepung, telur, minyak untuk menggoreng and so on. Anything yang we use to produce goreng pisang. This is under the category of land. Uh, second one, to, uh, secondly, to produce goreng pisang, we must have labor. Sebab pisang tu tak boleh gulik-gulik sendiri masuk dalam kuali, tak boleh. Kena ada orang buat kan. Uh, so, akan ada pekerja yang akan buat potong-potong pisang, goreng pisang and so on. This is labor. Okay, ini peranan labor. And third one, kita kena ada capital. Meaning that, orang yang, eh sorry, a production eats. You nak goreng pisang, you kena ada kuali. Ha, itulah, orang kata mesin barang untuk menghasilkan barangan. Dan you perlu ada kedai, takkan nak goreng pisang tengah-tengah jalan kan? Dan you kena ada pisau, nak potong pisang. Eh, itu adalah semua sekali uh, capital for you to be able to produce goreng pisang. And last kali, you kena ada entrepreneur. Mean that orang yang tahu specifically how to produce goreng pisang. Nak guna pisang mana. Masa beli pisang tu, uh, pisang masak ke, pisang tak masak ke, berapa level masak dia, berapa suhu nak menggoreng dia, berapa lama nak menggoreng, berapa campuran tepung kepada pisang, berapa banyak nak letak garam. Itu semua adalah yang entrepreneur tahu. Uh, label ni cuma dengan arahan. So, ada keempat-empat ni, then we can produce good and services. The problem is, these four things ni, okay, bukan nak hasilkan kuih pisang je lah. Every types of goods yang human wants, for example, kalau you tengok sekeliling, you can pen, also dihasilkan menggunakan four factors of production ni. Uh, buku, baju, semua. Okay. Tapi, these four factors of production are subject to scars. What does it mean by scars? Scars mean limited, terhad. Okay? Terhad lah. Uh, ada student kata kat saya, uh, tak terhad lah medium. Labor kan ramai. Tengok menganggur lagi. Kalau you rasa labor tak terhad, kenapa kita perlukan labor buruh asing? Sebab kita ada masalah kekurangan labor. Dan kenapa rakyat kita tak cukup pekerjaan? Maybe sebab dia memilih pekerjaan. Wallah alam. Badan. Maybe ada mismatch of skills between the the apa the skills that needed with the skills that is provided by the labour. Okay. So labour also subject to scarcity. In terms of land, pisang. Kalau musim tengkucuh kan, pokok pisang tak sempat nak berbuah. So kita tak ada pisang macam mana? Saya kan goreng pisang. Uh, in terms of tepung, kalau for example wheat kan, negara yang menghasilkan gandum, tak boleh menghasilkan gandum sebab tsunami ke apa ke kita akan ada masalah scarcity same goes with the telur ayam and so on ok and what about capital, capital kalau dia musnah ataupun rosak for example berlaku bencana alam uh, kedai musnah, machinery musnah, tak cukup juga capital same goes for employee, uh, entrepreneur entrepreneur can die Ha, so, tak ada uh, orang yang tahu ilmu untuk menghasilkan goreng pisang, tak akan berlakunya goreng pisang. So, all these are subject to scarcity. And sometimes, bila kita overuse of these resources, dia akan menyebabkan tak cukup. Um, kita tak, uh, orang kata, uh, use this efficiently. So, bila tak cukup, kita tak akan berjaya memenuhi kehendak manusia. Human wants takkan cukup. Okay. So that's why kita ada economics. Here, bidang ekonomi ni nak study how kita nak manage this limited four factors of production ni in order to try to fulfill all the unlimited wants of the human. Uh, take for example, eh, in Singapore. The country is too small but the population is in a large number dia ada ramai kan and everybody would like their, to have their own house tapi sebab negara dia terlampau kecil they cannot provide uh, orang kata landed house for everybody 
macam nak macam kat Malaysia ni rumah sebuah-sebuah lepas tu ada tanah lebih ada laman cannot kat sana sebab kat sana dia ada limited tanah dia ber, uh, negara dia kecil so they cannot provide all landed houses for the people there so they have the scarcity in terms of land so how do they manage the economic manage to find solution for that after they figure out they can build up houses yang bertingkat so you need to have a piece of uh, of land but you can accommodate thousand of family there buatlah rumah condominium ke uh, flat ke uh, as long as everybody has their own house so this is how economic solve the problem Okay, and as time goes by kita akan nampak lah lagi banyak isu-isu yang ekonomi boleh selesaikan for example in terms of the usage of petroleum as time goes by kan uh, petroleum dah habis kan so kita kata oh kalau tak, tak ada nanti macam mana kereta kita nak bergerak kan sebab most of the car use petroleum right and we have discover a way to produce car without the usage of petroleum kita ada solar car kita ada hybrid car kita ada car yang guna waste product and so itu adalah semua solution yang kita boleh dapat uh, from economics studies lah the social, uh, uh, social science ni adalah a study of about human behavior so kita kita find solution for that and Uh, there are two branches in economic which is macroeconomics and microeconomics and macroeconomics so apa beza dia uh, micro ni maksud dia small and here um, this is small this is this one is large so mean that microeconomics is the study of decision making by individual parts such as household firms and government micro ni dia lebih fokus tau dia fokus kepada specific entity while macro macro we study of economy in terms of the whole secara menyeluruh ok for example kita tengok dari segi negara bukan specific entity so nak bagi you lagi senang faham lah for example uh, kita kata Uh, I would like to study the issue of economy uh, about the spending of Ahmad nah, so kita specific individual kita nak tengok pattern perbelanjaan Ahmad so itu adalah isu micro sebab dia specific entity tapi kalau you, you kata soalan dia uh, we like to study the pattern of spending of Malaysian citizen so everybody included Here, itu akan jadi isu makro ok so sikit atau banyak tak akan melambangkan mikro ataupun makro spesifik ataupun tidak itu akan melambangkan makro ataupun mikro for example kan uh, dia kata uh, they would like to see the pattern of expenditure of Petronas company kan so We all know kan, Petronas is a big company, right? Tapi bila dia kata dia nak fokus kepada expenditure of Petronas, dia fokus kepada satu company saja. Walaupun Petronas tu is very large, a very big company, kita tak boleh kata itu adalah isu makro tau. Dia still bawah micro. Sebab kita fokus kepada specific entity saja, iaitu Petronas. So kalau nak jadikan dia isu sebagai isu makro Dia mesti mention macam ni Dia nak tengok pattern of expenditure of all petroleum company in Malaysia Barulah dia akan jadi isu makro ha, So biasanya isu makro ni lebih kepada unemployment rate Kadar pengangguran dalam negara Inflation, inflasi ataupun international trade lah ha, Export dan import negara Okay Alright, so hopefully you are able to understand this Nak tahu you faham ataupun tak uh, Saya ada sertakan soalan multiple choice Make sure you try Kalau you boleh jawab soalan multiple choice tu Mean that you are good, you are set to go 
and we have economic concept here next we have economic concept of scarcity choices and opportunity cost i already explained about scarcity tadi kita nampak scars tu okay scars is for scarcity meaning that limited limited resources but unlimited wants hmm. due to the problem of scarcity people need to make choice awak kena buat pilihan contohlah kan I give you scarcity kita lah nak bagi relate senang kan student we have scarcity of money you tak cukup duit you cuma ada RM10 and then you ada banyak wants bukan satu je first you want to buy lunch second you want to buy books third you want to go to the cinema nak tengok wayang everything worth 10 ringgit RM10 this one is also RM10 and this one is also RM10 but you only have RM10 so what should you do? you must choose when you have the issue of scarcity you will have another concept which is choice you cannot get all 3 because if you want to have all 3 you need to have 30 ringgit the problem is you only have 10 ringgit so what should you do is you choose uh, so what does he mean by uh, choice to choose among the best alternative uses the resources can provide uh, so this is the best choice you have but if you choose one you need to forego the, the, the other two okay for example you are very hungry you choose to eat lunch Okay, so kita assume lah lunch ni sepuluh ringgit. Macam saya kurangkan lunch, lunch saya jadi dua ringgit je. Tak, ini sekarang ni kita pakai assumption eh. Everything worth ten ringgit. So when you choose to buy lunch, it will be, uh, we will have another concept which is opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the foregone cost. Uh, so what is the foregone cost? The opportunity cost or uh, or the foregone cause of not choosing the other best alternative meaning that the other two choices yang you tak pilih tu akan menjadi cost lepas awak opportunity cost is cost lepas yang you terpaksa lepaskan dalam ekonomi kita uh, calculate that as a cost lah sebab kalau you ada duit 30 you boleh dapat semua tapi sekarang ni because you ada duit 10 ringgit that's why you need to foregone hmm same goes with the country lah if for example the country ada sebidang je tanah left kan ha, lepas tu ada ke, eh, dia buat survey kehendak rakyat ada tiga pertama rakyat nak uh, shopping mall ha, second rakyat nak stadium third rakyat nak hospital tapi tanah ada sebidang je yang left so what will the government do dia akan survey which one yang paling penting sekali untuk rakyat so people choose hospital for example so dua lagi yang tak terpilih ni ini akan jadi foregone cost the opportunity cost choice tak semestinya ada tiga eh dia boleh ada lima ada sepuluh ok and choice akan wujud sekiranya wujud with uh, scarcity so scarcity means the resources are limited therefore society has to make choice resources are limited but ones are unlimited so when you want to explain about scarcity scarcity comes together with um, limited resources but unlimited ones you must mention both ok done there next we go for the four basic economics problem uh, what to produce how to produce, how much to produce and for whom to produce due to the scarcity ok, if you want to explain about the four basic economic problems please make sure you explain according to the sequence what to produce dulu baru how to produce baru how much to produce and for whom to produce you tak boleh for whom to produce pasal jump to what pasal jump to for uh, how much cannot dia ikut turutan ok 
So let's go for the first one. Since resources are scarce, the society has to decide what to produce based on the needs. Macam saya kata tadi lah, kita ada cuma sebidang tanah. So nak decide what should we do with the piece of land ni. Ha. Product that is most needed by the society will have precedence over another. So product yang uh, apa paling berkeperluan oleh society akan dipilih untuk dihasilkan. So this is what to produce. Basically depends on the needs of the people. Okay, next is how to produce. How to produce is the method of producing the product. Whether using capital intensive, capital intensive means that using machinery or labor intensive, meaning that using human capability. Saya dah teruk sangat tulisan saya ni kan? Lama tak menulis. Ha, kalau uh, apa? Labor intensive, human capability. Okay, so ada dua cara untuk menghasilkan barangan. Either menggunakan mesin ataupun menggunakan tenaga buruh. Okay. So, whichever method to be chosen must be the cheapest method. Tak ada kata, oh, labor lah murah medium. Guna mesin mahal. Tak, it depends on the country. Some country, especially the uh, high income country, negara-negara maju. For example, South Korea, Japan, UK, US. Cheapest method dia adalah capital intensive. Because if they want to hire labor... The, uh, the minimum income of the labor there is expensive. Uh, for example, nak bina rumah kan? Kalau you tengok dalam national uh, geographic, discovery channel ke, kalau kat negara maju, dia pakai machine, pakai crane, pakai, uh, maksudnya labor tu kurang. Lebih kepada penggunaan machinery untuk menghasilkan uh, bangunan. Tapi kalau dekat negara membangun, macam kita Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, kita lebih menggunakan Uh, apa labor untuk menghasilkan uh, apa binaan uh, so itu adalah beza tau kalau negara membangun kita cheapest labor intensive kalau negara maju cheapest dia capital intensive depending lah uh, whichever method will be the cheapest method some will choose capital intensive which means the usage of machinery to produce product and some will uh, choose labor intensive which means the usage of labor or human capability to produce product it depends on which the chi which one is the cheapest method okay and next is how much to produce because we have the issue of scarcity meaning that our resources are limited kita tak tak boleh bazi-bazi tau uh, so It refers to amount of goods to be produced. So, how much to be produced according to the market demand. Banyak mana yang uh, demanded by the buyer, banyak itulah kita akan hasilkan. Kita tak boleh hasilkan terlebih-lebih to avoid the problem of shortage. Shortage maksudnya terkurang. Kita hasilkan cu uh, tak, tak cukup untuk yang uh, diminta oleh pembeli. Ataupun surplus, mean that terlebih pembaziran berlaku. Uh, so both is a problem This one is a problem This one is also a problem Nanti untuk chapter market equilibrium I'll explain further about shortage and surplus The amount to be produced Also depends on the availability of resources uh, Kita tak boleh hasilkan outside the production capability Okay um, Of a particular country We have the limitation Uh, the the amount of resources we have that is the amount that we can produce we can we cannot go outside and next is for whom to produce for whom to produce refers to the distribution issue on who should get the product high or low income group or uh, who demanded the product uh, ataupun product tu kalau country tu uh, nak jual locally ataupun to be uh, exported for example Malaysia It's a country uh, antara negara yang kedua terbesar di Asia Tenggara yang menghasilkan uh, apa palm oil. So, kita tak tak hasilkan untuk consumption uh, dalam negara sahaja. Kita export untuk kegunaan luar negara. Uh, so, it depends on uh, how much to be produced depends on the demand uh, and for whom to get the product. Okay? So, you can uh, read further in the textbook kita ada explanation further tapi roughly macam itulah cara nak explain 
uh, about economics problem and uh, the branches and also economic concept all right uh, let's go for uh, let's stop here and i'll explain another part in the second teaching video thank you for listening